Hello and welcome to the Portfolio Matters Silver Squeeze Special, which is going to be presented by Keith following the interesting action late last week and this morning in the silver market. And before he does, I will read the disclaimer. Everything discussed during the Portfolio Matters podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. Listeners should be aware that we will be discussing securities that we own or have a financial interest in. Please do your own research or consult a professional investment advisor before making any decisions regarding topics mentioned on the show. A full disclaimer can be found at the end. Keith, over to you. Thank you, Richard. Okay, so late last week, there was a... um, big movement in the silver market, which has continued today. So this morning, we have before the US Open, uh, silver has squeezed 10% higher. Now, what's going on is that the Reddit crowd have got bored with GameStop and have decided to see whether they can squeeze the silver market higher. So the question is, can they do this? And what should you as an investor or we as investors do? Yeah. Okay. So in summary, we think they could do this. It all depends on how other investors react, but there's certainly the potential for a short squeeze. If you can get enough investors to buy silver and that, well, that is the big question. So if you already have silver or you have some silver miners, all of which are squeezing higher this morning, then you have a free option. And we would intend to hold on and see where this goes. But you should be aware that squeezes do not last. The the price can go very high very quickly, but it will come back down again. And at some stage, if you want to maximize your return, you have to be prepared to sell and to realize that you will never get the top. And it may come down again very quickly. Very quickly indeed. And I would refer all viewers to that marvelous book, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, where Jesse Livermore's advice is always to sell on the way up when there's liquidity. Okay, so the silver market has a history of squeezes. We will take you through some of them later. And the reason behind the the Reddit crowd's um, attempt to squeeze the silver market is that there are these popular theories that the silver market is heavily manipulated and that the number of financial instruments based on silver far exceeds the physical amount quantity of silver available. So Mm. all these silver ETFs have multiple claims on the same bar of silver. So the idea behind the squeeze is, if the Reddit crowd can get people to buy silver, you're taking silver out of the system, which means that the number of financial claims on the existing silver will um, increase and people will be in a scramble to buy physical silver. Now, one of the things I've looked at and we will go into is this week's Commodities and Futures Trading Commission's Commitment of Trader Report, which shows the outstanding commitments in long and short positions in silver. And you will see there were very substantial short positions in silver. And so that creates the possibility of a short squeeze. However, the silver market is much, much bigger than GameStop. So, for example, the, in 2018, which is the last figures I could get, the average daily turnover on COMEX alone, and bear the fact that COMEX is only one of many exchanges around the world that trade silver, they were doing 102,000 contracts a day. That's mm. 15 billion. So you really need to amass a lot of investor money to move this market. However, the silver to gold ratio is at a historic low. So silver is very cheap compared to gold. So it is 
you could argue that silver is undervalued as a monetary metal. And of course, if you if the squeeze is actually a physical squeeze, you won't need you won't necessarily need to um, amass anything that challenges the COMEX turnover. You just need to yes. move, remove sufficient silver from the market that it can't be bought at the current price. Yeah, agreed. But what I'd say is this is a speculative opportunity where a lot depends on investors' moods. So I would think about how you have reacted to the bought this uh, squeeze upwards in the silver price. I mean, I certainly have not sold any. I'm waiting and seeing. And all you need is for nobody to sell and people net to start buying silver to see what's happened. And you've so, got your squeeze. Yeah. Um, and I suspect a lot of people are invested in silver for a relatively long term. I am. Yeah. And uh, if it squeezes up, that's great. Uh, but it, it's not necessarily a long term move. So it may be at the end of this, there's, all, there's a, the opportunity to take some profits and reinvest at a lower price. But um, I'm anticipating the price of silver will go up. I just didn't expect it to spike quite like this. Yes. But well, I also expect it will go up more than this over the course of several years. So, mm. you know, this is a little bit of an artificial situation right now. Of course, yes. It's very much an artificial situation. But I would, if I was a betting man, I would be more bullish than bearish at this point, frankly. Absolutely, Absolutely. yeah. So let's look at the uh, commitment of traders report. And this is for the 26th. So it's always about a week behind. But the things you need to take away from this are just looking at the short positions. So you can see producers are the biggest shorts and those are hedging their production. But then swap mm -hmm. dealers have a short 52,000 contracts and each contract is 5,000 ounces. Money managers are short 23,000. Now, you'll see there are, the preponderance of money is on the long side, but I doubt many people will be both long and short. So there'll be quite a number of players who yeah. are net short and yep. that creates your squeeze. As the, high, the price of silver goes up, so their losses increase and then they will need to fund margin calls. And at some stage, they can be squeezed out of the market and need to buy back their short positions. Yeah. And there's 7,000 uh, contracts short from others, which is private investors or whatever. So if you aggregate the value of that, that adds up to a lot of money. Um, 60, 61,000 short contracts at 5,000 ounces each at a price of $29.50 equates to 9 billion. So a 10% rise in the silver price means yeah. that a daily losses today, producers have lost 900 million. Swap dealers have lost 770 million. Those are not insubstantial numbers. But also, Keith, if they, uh, the producers I'm not so worried about because they can yeah. close their positions by, by producing, but if the swap dealers that the short swap dealers need to close their positions because they they can't take the losses, then that itself is, would would squeeze the price up even higher. And the losses, um, you know, depending on what price they enter, but if they entered into these positions at somewhere near a twenty dollars, then the, the losses that they're exposed to already could be a, a third of the um, a third of the seven billion. And every time the price goes up by uh, ten dollars, they're uh, their exposure would their loss exposure would double if that's the price at which they bought in on average. So anyway, moving on to the silver gold nice on the right side of it, if what I'm trying to say. Yes, that's right. Exactly. Um, as you're going back to the uh, previous slides, the other thing I want to say was producers. A lot depends on whether there was a, dis a mismatch between the size of their hedges each month. Yeah. and their production because yeah. they will have to meet margin calls yeah. on their short positions yes that's very true and they'll be producing on a regular schedule so there is a po possibility that of yeah. course financial distress amongst producers who are hedged 
producer. Yeah. Um, now, if you look at the gold silver ratio, this sorry, this is the silver gold ratio. So you'll see that silver is relatively cheap compared to gold when you look at it over the last 30 years. And when you extend it over the last say, 50 years, then you'll see that it is towards the low end of the range. Mm. But you will also see that there are plenty of spikes in the silver gold ratio. So in like 1976, then the famous yeah. one in uh, 7980. Yeah. Um, but other periodic ones are 1997, 98, and then uh, 2011. And so what that's Telling us, Keith, it's, it's realistic for the price of silver to double uh, whilst the price of gold stays constant. I'm not saying it could happen, it will happen, but it's, it wouldn't be an unrealistic move were it to happen. No, that's right. If you were, the price of silver were to double from here, you would take the um, silver gold ratio to 0.28 roughly, which is about yeah. here, yeah. Yeah. Um, which is not unreasonable. Not beyond the bounds of, of reasonableness that the silver price would could double. Um, we're not saying it it will do, but it, it wouldn't be an unreasonable thing for it to do so. Yeah. Okay. So in summary, this is a possibility, and if you hold silver, then um, obviously this is not advice. But I certainly am holding on to um, see what happens. Because these are early days, then any squeeze, you know, in a certain market such as this, that, that occurs over weeks and months rather than days. And Keith, the important thing also is timing when you're going to lighten your positions up, isn't it? And maybe we should sort of update uh, periodically on, on what, what our view is there, because I yeah. think the last thing one wishes to happen is to sail through the spike and then realize it's halfway back down to where it started from um and you haven't sold you haven't taken any profit at all yeah absolutely i my own exit strategy for these sort of positions is when it goes parabolic mm. that is the time to start selling now we are in the early stages up 10 percent this morning and obviously, yeah. this is a matter of judgment. But my own feeling is that people are just becoming aware of the possibility of a squeeze. And yeah. as that develops, it will go, if it works, it will go rapidly upwards. And when it starts to you know, go up 10% every day for a number of days, that's the time to get, up, get out. Sorry, Keith, uh, just looking at my graph of silver. On the 7th of August, it hit the, it hit, um, $30.10 and uh, that is the target which I guess it has to break through doesn't it and then right. if it breaks through that that high in August then I think there's a probably a lot more people will start jumping on the bandwagon yeah okay so we will keep you updated as this continues thank you for listening uh, thank you very much Keith and uh, goodbye from Keith Jordan. And goodbye from Richard Wheater. Goodbye. Bye. Full disclaimer, the material and information contained in this podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon for making a business, legal or any other decision. We may own or have a financial interest in any securities mentioned. Listeners should conduct their own research or consult a professional investment advisor before making any decisions regarding topics mentioned on the show. Whilst we endeavour to ensure that the information presented on the show is correct, we make no representations or warranties of any kind, expressed or implied, with respect to the podcast and website or to any information, products, services or related graphics discussed or presented in the podcast or website. Any reliance you place on such material is strictly at your own risk. You are solely responsible for the investment decisions you make. We will not be responsible for any errors or omissions in the podcast or website, including in articles or postings, for hyperlinks embedded in messages, or for any results obtained from use of such information. 
nor will we be liable for any loss or damage, including consequential damages, if any, caused by a reader's reliance on any information provided by the podcast or website. Please do not listen to the podcast if you do not accept self-responsibility for your actions.